Hey everybody and welcome to my next tutorial video. In this video I want to cover freezing and thawing layers. So how do we have all of our information on one drawing but yet we can show totally different information when it comes to printing and paper space and viewports. Okay? All right, so first off, I'm going to catch you up what I have here in my drawing to kind of relate to you and what you might have in terms of your drawing or what you need to produce in a drawing. So I have just, a, again, the regular floor plan that I've been using for a lot of tutorials, but I've added a lot of stuff to it. So I've added flooring for every single space, and it looks like a mess, right? Like it looks like there's so much information on top of each other right now. And I've done that, again, to prove a point, everything is on one drawing. So I'm going to zoom out, like zoom, zoom, zoom out. And then I'm going to use the command Z enter all, A, A enter for all, A enter for all, to prove to you that this is all that I have in my file. So then I'm going to do Z enter, E enter for expense, and it will zoom into the only thing I have in my file for you. Okay, so I wanted to prove that this is the only thing I have in my file, and everything is on one plan. Everything is on one drawing. So you're going to see it's a kind of a mess here, right? Like I've got all my flooring decided. I've got these like little notes here for my flooring. I've got these notes, my working, just bare minimum working drawing notes here, just bare minimum. And I've got dimensions, just bare minimum dimensions. But I, again, I, all of my stuff is on top of one another. Okay. Everything is set up by layers. Okay. So I, I mean by like drawings, right? So like I don't have everything on one layer. That's key here. Everything has to be set up on its own layer. So all of my text, it's on its own layer. I'll open my layer drop down bar here so you can see. All of my doors are on their own layer, my windows, my hatching, my fixtures, you know, my dimensions, my deck, my walls, my windows, everything is on its own layer. Okay, I've even separated text versus notes. Okay, and I'll get to why I did that in a minute. Um, so everything is divided up into layers so again just be sure that your drawing is clean and you've got things onto the correct layers okay so we go to paper space right we go to paper space we want to print this and i've got a 11 by 17 piece of paper set up here that i've already set up okay again for setting up your paper please go check out the printing plotting folder um at the near the bottom of my rainbow folders there um go to the go to the um uh, printing and plotting section and there's a lot of stuff there on uh, uh printing and plotting um and I'll, i cover how to set up your page there in case that's what you're looking for so i don't want to cover that in this video I'm just going to cover quick stuff about freezing and thawing layers. So the first thing I want to show you is a trick on how to quickly add viewports on your paper. So we we um, type out the command viewport, and we get a viewport dialog box. Now, these are quite handy, okay? I have a paper here at 11 by 17, again, once again set up. I want two horizontal, two horizontal uh, viewports. And I don't want to have to worry about setting these up at the same size or anything like that. I just want two horizontal and let AutoCAD do the rest for me. So I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to get a crosshair. AutoCAD's going to go, OK, what space do you want these two horizontal viewports in? Well, I'm going to draw a nice big box. I'm going to zoom here to the corner to help my eyes out. And I'm going to zoom out to the other corner and zoom in. I'm going to draw a nice big box around the entire piece of paper. Once I finish the box and I zoom out, just like that, AutoCAD, okay, it goes, all right, here's your two horizontal viewports. Again, I don't have to make these individual. It's quite handy. Okay. Now, I do not want my viewports to print, okay? And I covered in a previous video about all sorts of stuff about layers 101 on making sure you have a layer set up that's set up not to print. And usually that's set up by default, and it's called def points. That's a layer, once again, set up not to print. But I don't have that, right? So I had to create an actual layer, do not print. And once again, I show you how you how to do that in the video called Layers 101. In the same folder, you would have found this video. Or I'm also actually, actually upload this video in two spots. So go check out the Layers folder for that video. <laughs> I'm going to keep referencing my videos to make sure you all know what information's out there. OK, so I need these to not print. They're on my text layer, not good. So I'm going to select both of them. Just do a nice green box to touch both of them. And I'm going to put them on my do not print layer. So I know my these rectangles will not print. They're just a dividing line for my sake of doing two different viewports. Okay, 
So next, what I want to show you is how to set up your scale. You know, this is simple. We know how to set up scale. But what I want to do is show you how to reset your scales. So I'm going to double click into my first plan here. And I happen to test this out already. So I know what scale I want to use. But, you know, you may have opened up your scales here and you see both metric and imperial. And you're like, whoa, what the heck? I know. And, and it shocked me at first when I first used AutoCAD as well. So I want to show you how to reset these. So you're going to go to the bottom and you're going to click on custom. I'm working in Imperial, and that's usually what the interior decorators work in. For my architectural technology students that might be listening to this, you're going to want to go metric. Um, and for my design foundation students that might be listening to this, you guys kind of use either or. So again, follow what side assignments you want to do or challenge yourself. But it depends on this file, right? So you want to base it on this file. This is all different dependent on the file, OK? This does not change uh, your AutoCAD settings. This is just on in this file, OK? So I'm going to click Reset. And it goes, whoa, okay, you're going to reset your scales. Hold on, what unit do you want? And this is why I just did that summary of different uh, trades, um, because I want you to make sure that you pick the appropriate scale that you drew your project in. Okay, so once again, I drew this floor plan in Imperial, in inches and feet. Okay, so I'm going to want to pick Imperial. If you drew your floor plan or drawing, whatever it is, if you don't get floor plan, whatever it is, if you drew your drawing in metric, please click metric here, okay? It has to be in the same unit of measure. So I'm gonna click Imperial and just like that, it narrows my list down and I'm just gonna click okay. Now if I click in this drop down bar, it's way easier to navigate. I just have my Imperial scales. All right, so once again, go ahead and click on that custom button. And again, in the tutorial video, if you want me to repeat, you can just back up the video, right? I'm not gonna spend the time to repeat, uh, but it's in that custom button there, okay? Awesome. So I know I want to set up my um, page here at, um, oh, uh, what was it? Um, I forgot now what scale it was. I'm pretty sure it was 330 seconds. Yes, it is. Perfect. 330 seconds is how I can fit the entire plan in this viewport. So I'm going to double click in my other viewport as well, and I'm going to set this to 330 seconds. Okay, my next thing I want to show you is how to lock your viewport. You may not know how to do this. So let's say all of a sudden I think I double clicked outside of my viewport, but I accidentally just clicked once and I zoom. I wanted to zoom in up here, and I've now thrown off the scale. That's what's going to happen if you don't lock your viewports. I know I've exaggerated and I've dramatized it, but it happens, trust me. So please, please, please be sure that you lock your viewports. So I'm going to back up Control Z, just undo, and double check that I'm at 330 seconds of my scale now, and I'm going to click the little lock that's to the left of your scale button in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. So the lock goes blue, and now if I zoom, I actually just zoom my whole page. It doesn't, I'm double-clicked inside. I have activated my viewport because it's bold, but I can't play with the scale. I can't pan. It's quite fabulous. So I'm going to double click outside of my viewport and do that again with this one. I double click inside and I'll, I'll, I'll explain myself just quickly here again. If I zoom right now, activating this viewport, I will throw off this scale. Okay. But if I double click inside this viewport, I will not. And the difference once again is because I've locked this viewport. And in this one, I have not locked the viewport. Okay, so once again, this is very, very simple and a very uh, good uh, step to do on all your drawings to maintain um, that they are good, that no one can touch. Like you play with it, you know. It, it especially if you're sharing your files from multiple people, this is a way of just um, minimizing mistakes. <laughs> especially for scale, printing your drawings to scale is so important. So I've just reset my drawing there to 330 seconds, and I've panned to make sure that I've lined it up properly. Be sure you do all this first. You've got to make sure your drawing is in the proper location you want it to be in. Then you lock your viewport, okay? And once again, I double click outside to deactivate. But if I'm activated in my viewport and I zoom, I can't play with the scale now. It is locked. And you'll see the lock, the actual scale in the bottom goes a little bit more gray to tell you you can't touch it. You can't play with it. It's locked. All right. So to simply unlock it, you just click the lock again and you can edit your scale. OK, so just that's how you do it back and forth. Just click on that like lock icon. OK, now into freezing and thawing. I wanted to show you those just preliminary things first, because those are just little hidden um, tidbits, I find, that aren't really uh, shown often. So I just want to make sure that everybody out there kind of that may be watching this video knows about those little tricks. 
Okay. So now what I have done, or so what I've done in my floor plan, once again, is I've got the difference of finishes of my flooring and I have the difference of all my dimensions and notes. So I'm going to do the difference between a construction plan and a finishes plan. Okay, and I'm going to make this very obvious for a minute now, um, just so that way it again is very obvious. And I know this is going to be so large for a second, so just give me a second here. I know this is going to be large, just give me a second to type this out. Let's see. Right. And let me just put this to proper size now so that way we can actually use it. <laughs> oh, much better. Okay, wonderful. Actually, I'm just going to go even smaller. Much better. Okay, so let me just put this into place here. I know this is not a proper view title by any means, but I just want to make this very clear as the difference for the sake of the tutorial, the difference between these two plans. So you can reference as to why you may use this skill set. So once again, I'm going to create a construction plan and a finishes plan. Okay, so that's why I put the text there quickly, just to make that very obvious. Okay, and if you want to zoom in just to your paper, please feel free to always click Z enter and draw a box into the area you want to zoom into. And I just find that allows me to just get the look, oh, and I just zoomed out. There we go. It just allows me to get the look that I want it to be in terms of a zoomed in look. That might help you too. Okay. I'm just going to quickly save my file. I suggest you do the same if you're following along. All right, so how do I show just my dimensions and notes up here and just my hatching down here? Once again, I've added dimensions and notes for the sake of a construction plan, and I've added a whole bunch of flooring hatching for the sake of a finishes plan. So we are going to freeze and thaw the, the certain layers we do and don't want. Okay, so in my construction plan, I do not want all this hatching. I don't want anything to do with the finishes. And I've put all of my finishes onto the hatching layer. So what you're going to do is you are going to double click inside of your viewport. You are going to click into the drop down bar of your layers. And once again, I mentioned this is my construction plan. I do not want my finishes. And I've put all of my finishes onto my hatching layer. So whatever layer you do not want to see in this viewport, you're going to click this little icon. Okay, it looks like a screen with a sun over it. That is your VP freeze, which means your freezer thaw in a viewport. VP meaning viewport. Very important, okay? Not your typical freeze and thaw. This is in a viewport. All right, so I'm going to click that button, and just like that, the sun turns to a snowflake, and my finishes disappear. Once again, you're going to do that to whatever layer you do not want to see in this viewport. Okay, and I'm going to repeat this a couple of times here because I actually need to. <laughs> and also because it, it just it general needs to be. All right, so once again, I'm done with that one. All I wanted to do is just hide at my finishes. I want the rest of everything else to be shown. Um, let's say for a sake of argument, I don't want to see my fixtures as well. I'm going to once again click in this drop down bar. And I'm, I don't want to see like my bathroom and kitchen fixtures in my construction plan. Let's say, for instance, I just want that in a separate, let's say I have a fixtures plan. So therefore, I'm going to use this button, tap this button here, click, sorry, click this button. And it turns a uh, the sun to a snowflake. And sure enough, all of my fixtures have disappeared. All right, so I'm done with that viewport. I'm going to now work on this one. I'm going to double click inside this viewport, off of this viewport. And I'm going to double click inside this viewport. Once again, it's activated. That is a must. You must double click inside your viewports in order for this to work. Okay, once again, if you just decide to click on your viewport and do this, it will not work. Okay, you have to activate the viewports, which means double click inside. The same thing you do when you set your scale. Okay, so I click in my layer drop down bar once again now. And in this one, I don't want to see my notes and my dimensions. So I'm going to freeze my dimensions, but VP freeze my dimensions, and VP freeze my notes. 
I click away and double click outside the viewport to deactivate. And I'm going to zoom out just so you, so you, can, you can see the full effect. So once again, I'm going to jump to model space to prove a point. I have everything on the same drawing. This is the only thing in my file. This right here is the only thing in my file, and that command I just did proves it. But yet, when I go to my paper space here, it looks like I've drawn two separate files, uh, drawings completely. And that's the magic of freezing and thawing your viewports. It is so handy. I can clearly see the difference in the needs of these plants, right? I see my dimensions, I see my notes, and here I just see my finishes. Okay, my little my little headings and all that, you know, you, depending on the layers, right? Just make sure you put everything on the right layer. So, for instance, right here, that W for my washer and dryer, I'd want to put that on my fixtures layer. So that way it also freezes in this viewport, right? So let's do that. So I'm going to go back to model space. I'm going to MA for match properties, my fixtures to here, or make another layer called fixtures labels. That would probably be more smart. So that way, in case you wanted to select all your text, you could do that. Um, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to do that quickly for the sake of an argument as well. And then go back into my layers, and sure enough, they're gone. <laughs> so it it acts interactively like that. So if you've realized that something is on there, you want to put that on a different layer, go ahead and match properties on a frozen layer, and it's going to freeze for you right away. I don't have to redo it, which is quite nice. It is interactive, which is fantastic with the freezing and thawing of the layers as well. Okay, so that is freezing and thawing layers. And once again, everything is on the same drawing, but yet I can show totally different information in two different viewports, multiple viewports. I could have six different viewports and showing all sorts of different information, right? So it's just a fantastic skill set to have with AutoCAD, and you could use this in all forms of trades. All right, hope you learned something fun out of this video. Thank you so much for listening. Take care. Ciao.